Hello and welcome to Colred Plays Raid Shadow Legends. I am Colred. I hope you're having a great day. In today's video, we are going to be covering the arena. Now we're going to be talking about everything you need to know to get started in the arena, be effective right from the beginning of the game, into mid game, and on into late game. We're going to cover the basics of how to build a go first team effectively. We're also going to cover the basics of how to build a go second team effectively. So we're going to get you powered up. We're going to get you moving up into high silver. And we're going to talk about the challenges of getting into gold and then staying in gold. We're not worried about platinum arena. That is an end game thing that really free to play players for the most part can just push aside. That's that's a bridge too far. But everything else from bronze one all the way up to gold five is going to be covered in this video. So even if you're an experienced player, maybe you're a vet, if you've ever struggled with arena or you're just, you know, you need a refresher on how to build good arena teams. This video's got you covered. Now I am going to be bouncing between my two accounts just to cover all of the bases. So here I am on my main account and we're going to start with building a go first team. Now don't worry about the particular champions that I use as examples. There are, are a lot of champions in Raid Shadow Legends over 800. So there are typically, you know, 10 or 20 or 50 champions that can cover any role that we're going to be discussing. So I will be using my champions as examples of roles rather than examples of specific champions you need in order to be effective in the arena. OK, so here we are in the arena and I'm just going to pick this first battle here in order to show you my primary team. Now, again, don't worry too much about the champions on this team. You want to consider them as examples for their role. So if we go into the team setup here, you can see all of the stats. Now, Arbiter is performing two duties here. First of all, she is the largest speed aura that I have. So she is the leader for that aura. If you have Wukong and your early game, he will likely be your speed aura. He does not have to be the fastest champion on your team. He just has to have the largest aura that you have available. In this case, Arbiter is the fastest champion on my team because she also has the largest turn meter fill. And this is really important. On a go first team, your fastest champion needs to be bringing a turn meter fill that is going to alleviate the speed requirements for the rest of your team. So Arbiter's A3 here increases the turn meter of all allies by 30%. What that means is if I add 30% to the speed of my other champions, really my second fastest champion is the one that matters, and that number passes the threshold of 333, that means those two champions can't be disconnected. As long as my Arbiter goes first, as long as I win the speed race and actually have the Arbiter go first, this speed of 333 is the speed cap in that battle. That means she's the fastest. She determines what the 100% looks like. So my second fastest champion is actually Deacon Armstrong. He's at 283 speed. Now he's going to get that 30% turn meter fill. So basically what I can look at is I can say, if I add 30% to 283, do I cross the threshold of the 333 speed that Arbiter has? So 30% of 283 is 84, uh, a little bit more than 84, 85. So that would take me up to about 367, 368 speed. That's certainly faster than the 333 that Arbiter is running at. So that means Arbiter and Deacon cannot be disconnected without something strange happening, like without somebody else's passive uh, affecting my turn meter in some way or affecting their turn meter in some way. So against a normal other team, whether it's go first or go second, there's no way for Arbiter to be disconnected from Deacon Armstrong, or I should say that the other way around. There's no way for Deacon Armstrong to not go second, basically. Now, my third fastest champion here is Cardiel, and he is running at 245 speed. Now remember that Deacon Armstrong will also be using his time compression, which gives me an additional 15% turn meter. So what that means is Cardiel actually gets 45% turn meter, 30% from Arbiter and 15% from Deacon. So I can take his speed of 245 and add 45% to that and see if I cross the 333 speed barrier. I'm not trying to reach Deacon Armstrong's speed of 283. I'm trying to reach the Arbiter's ceiling of 333 because that's the speed cap for the entire board. Okay, so I need to reach 333. So 45% of 245 is roughly 111 or 112. Uh, so that's going to take me up over 350. 
And again, that is going to take me past the speed threshold of 333. So this now means that Cardiel cannot be disconnected from Deacon Armstrong. So Arbiter, if she goes first, Deacon will definitely go second and Cardiel will definitely go third. Now I have to continue this all the way down to my nuker, who is Genbo. Now Genbo is running at 221 speed. He is also going to get the 45% turn meter boost, 30 from Arbiter, 15 from Deacon, just like Cardiel does. So if I add 45% to 221, I get about 99 speed, about 100 speed. So that takes me up to, say, call it 320. That is not fast enough. There is now a gap between the first three champions and my nuker of 13 speed. This is a gap where the enemy's arbiter could potentially go and disconnect my team. And if their team is perfectly tuned, then they could then nuke me out before my Genbo ever gets the chance to go. So this is actually dangerous. Now, the reason that this has happened is because my Arbiter used to be slower. I originally built this team when she was running at about 315 speed. Now, when she was running at 315 speed and Genbo was running at 221, the increase of 45% of turn meter would get him up to about 320, and 320 was faster than the 315 speed that Arbiter was currently running at, or back then. So then they were all connected and couldn't get disconnected. So in order to re-speed tune this team, I would need to add about, I think about 10 or 11, maybe 13 points of speed to Genbo. I could probably do that just through improving my glyphs or maybe one gear piece swap. But it would be important for me to do that if I want to continue using this team as a go first team, because every once in a while I have noticed I do get disconnected and I lose because of that. Now, I will just very quickly show you how this actually works in practice. I am going up here against another go first team. Uh, they have an arbiter, but I do think I'm going to be faster. And I think I'm going to be faster for a couple of reasons. The first is that I have a significantly higher team power, which means that I'm probably faster. Like team power isn't really about which team is better. It's about which team has more gear, and more stats. Um, so I, I'm pretty confident that I'm going to go first. The second thing that you'll notice here is that they don't have a, a turn meter filler at all. There is no second turn meter filler after Arbiter. So unless all three of these champions are going very fast, or at least the nukers are going very fast, they're likely to get disconnected. So even if their Arbiter goes first, I've got a good chance of cutting in with my Arbiter, and then I probably won't get disconnected, although Genbo could be a problem. But I think I'm going to be fine. So let's just see how this works. All right, so the most important aspect actually took place, which is that I won the speed race. You can see their turn meters. My turn meter. Uh, is completely full on Arbiter, and she is the first to go. So now I'm going to go ahead and use that A3 like I was talking about. Deacon is guaranteed to go next. He's going to use his A3 into his A2. He gets an extra turn. That's going to drop the defense of the enemy champions. Now Cardiel is not disconnected, so I'm going to go ahead and use his ally attack to kill this Ugo here. Hopefully we'll actually kill her. We did. And now we're going to go ahead and nuke with our Genbo. And because Genbo ignores unkillable, he actually kills Leo there. Leorius has that unkillable buff, but Genbo ignores it. So nice, easy speed win here. So this is how you build a go first team. Now, this concept works all the way from the beginning of the game to the end of the game. Clearly, I'm in gold five here, so it still works. But I'm going to take you onto my other account to show you that even in the early game, even in the first 10 days of an account, speed tuning a go first team can be very effective. Okay, so here we are on my new account. You can see that we are only on day 11. Um, and I've been using the speed tune. I've been using the speed tune for a few days. So we'll jump into the arena and we'll take a look. All right, I'm trying to find a good target here. Let's go ahead and look at this. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is right away, I am I, I have less power than the enemy team, but I'm going to take a chance that I can still make this speed tune work. And the reason is Deacon Armstrong. So in this case, I don't have two turn meter fillers. I only have one. I also don't have an increase attack on my entire team, but Athel brings her own increase attack. It's the lesser increase attack. Um, so at least I have that. My fourth champion here is Jamarsa. So if I show you this team, 
Let's see if I can do this in team setup. So let's go ahead and look at the team setup here. And one of the things that you'll notice is obviously that Sun Wukong is in the lead for that speed aura. That's going to make everybody on my team faster, but he is not my fastest champion. Deacon Armstrong is my fastest champion at 186. Now at 186, he's going to give 15% increased turn meter to everybody else. So I need to make sure that at least my Sun Wukong and Athel are connected. Jamarsa doesn't need to be connected because she's a reviver. So I actually want her going slower than the enemy team. So that if the enemy team nukes my team and kills somebody, then Jamarsa goes and brings everybody back. And that is the first sort of component of a go second team that you'll, you'll see in this video. That is something that we'll talk more about later as we get into go second teams. So Deacon Armstrong's running at 186, and then Sun Wukong is going to go next because he is the buff remover. So if the enemy has a shield set, I'm going to pull that shield set off with Sun Wukong. So 15% of 171, if I add that to 171, that's going to be about 26 speed or so, 27, about 26 speed. So that takes me up to 197 or so, and that's clearly faster than the 186 that Deacon Armstrong is going. So if Deacon goes first, then Sun Wukong must go second. He will not be cut in line. Now I have Athel. She's going to be my third fastest champion. And you'll notice that she's running at 163. So if I took 15% of 163 and added it, that'd be about 24 or 25 speed, somewhere around there. And if I added 24 speed, that gets me to 187. And Deacon is running at 186. So Athel is also perfectly speed tuned at this point to not get cut in. Now, if I increase Deacon Armstrong's speed by two, all of a sudden that's not true. So if I increase Deacon Armstrong's speed, I also need to increase Athel's speed. Okay, but right now they are perfectly speed tuned. Now, Jamarsa is running very slow at 141 because I want the enemy's team to go before Jamarsa goes, but I don't want her running so slow that they get to go twice before she goes because I need her to either heal or revive my team. So very quickly, you can, I, you can see I am in Silver 4 here. I've also set up a one-man defense so that I am likely to stay in Silver 4. I can push up into Gold, but I can't win very many fights in Gold 1, so I would rather just farm here in Silver 4 for a while as I'm building up my team, and that's fine because I don't need Gold Medals for quite a while. I will eventually need Gold Medals to build that great, those Great Hall bonuses up higher and higher, but for right now, as long as I can get three silver medals per win, that's pretty good. And honestly, it's better to get, you know, 25 wins a day in silver four than it is to get five wins a day in gold one. Um, so definitely you want to camp here at silver four for a while until your team gets strong enough and your tune gets strong enough to successfully push past gold one and into at least gold two or gold three if not all the way up to gold four. Okay, so now let's take a look at us up against this team. Now, there is a chance that the enemy team will go first if their fastest champion is faster than my deacon, but if not, this is probably going to be a win. I do have to pay attention to the fact that they have two pretty good nukers and that Kale is actually six stars even though he's level 44. So let's see what happens. Okay, so the first thing you'll notice is I lost the speed race. Their Wukong was very fast. However, because they have no turn meter fill, they've been disconnected. Now my deacon's going to go, and so I know that my Wukong is going to go after my deacon, and I know that my Athel is going to go after that. So I'm going to get three champions worth of turns, even though they won the speed race initially, because they aren't speed tuned properly. So let's use our turn meter fill, and then I'm going to use my drop defense. I got that on most everybody. Now I'm going to use Wukong's uh, buff strip in order to try to get these shields off of some of those champions and also to put up a block buffs. Also does a decent amount of damage there. Now again, we said that Athel brings her own increase attack, but because there is a block buffs debuff on me, I'm not gonna bother with that. I'm just gonna do a straight up nuke, and I'm gonna hope that I can kill at least two of these champions. Okay, so now we did kill two of those champions. I have a choice to make with my healer here. But if I can kill off Kale, I don't think their Athel can beat me on her own. So rather than heal herself, uh, I'm going to have Jamarsa go ahead and try to kill off Kale. That worked. And now I can just auto the rest of the way, and it should be no problem. Wukong does get his 
passive revive, but he's not tanky enough to withstand the damage that my team can put out. And there's a win. So a properly speed tuned team here beat an improperly speed tuned team, right? Their Sun Wukong was faster, but that doesn't matter. If you get disconnected, you're giving the enemy team a chance to come back into the fight. Okay, so that is it for the go first team. Basically, make sure that you have a nice big speed aura. Make sure you have at least one, if not two turn meter fillers. Also, make sure you get the buffs out there before you do your damage. So whether you're getting an increased attack buff out there for your team or also the debuffs, if you're dropping defense on the enemy team, you generally want both if you can fit them into a team. And then as long as your champions are speed tuned properly so that they don't get disconnected, your entire team will go and the goal is to either nuke out the entire enemy team in one round or potentially to take extra turns to just finish off any stragglers that might still be def uh, like tanky enough to survive, right? But you don't necessarily have to wipe everybody out. If there is a reviver on the other team, you want to make sure that you focus them out in addition to the nuker. And once you have the nuker and the reviver down, you're probably okay to go several rounds. Now we need to talk about go second teams. So I'm back on the main account here because this is where I'm going to be able to show you a go second team. I don't really have one available on my new account. So let's get into the basics of a go second team. Okay, so here I am in, back in gold five and I wanna take on a go first team because I wanna show you how a go second team can work against the go first team. Two go second teams, two really tanky teams, maybe that have a bunch of revivers or whatever, can end up just staring at each other for a half an hour and going back and forth and not really finishing a fight. So generally, if you have a go second team, you want to go against a go first team because a go first team is generally squishy and you're not gonna have a ton of damage on your team, but that doesn't matter if the enemy has no defenses. So I'm gonna pick this team down here, which is a clear go first team. And now I'm going to build a custom go second team that I hope can beat this. Now, the first thing that you're going to do after removing your go first team is you're going to look for a good defensive aura. Now, the two best defensive auras are generally defense or HP. Uh, you can have them in arena. You can have them in all battles. You can also go with the resistance aura if you think that the enemy is using like CCs or debuffs that you could potentially resist and that would prevent them from being able to nuke you out in the first round. But generally, defense is going to be better or HP is going to be better. If you know the enemy is using an ignored defense champion, then HP tends to be better than defense. So for me on this one, I'm going to actually take Ragash. Now, Ragash is a nuker and sort of a buffer and crowd controller. He's a very versatile defensive based damage dealer, and he brings a nice allied defense in all battles by 30 percent. You could certainly put like a, an ultimate death knight here in the lead. Or you could put, there are a bunch of other champions that you'll see here, but I would probably avoid a speed or a champion unless you're worried about getting lapped. If you think that the enemy is going to go twice for your one turn, like before you can even go the first time, then it might not matter how tanky you are because if the nuker gets two chances or if there's a reset champion over there like Kaimar and the nuker gets the two big nukes in a row, then you're probably not tanky enough to survive. So in that case, you might choose a speed aura. But in general, you want to just consider sort of what's going to be generally survivable against the vast majority of teams or against the specific team that you're going up against. So here I've got my increased defense aura. Now I know that I'm going to have some debuffs on me and I want to have some way to remove those debuffs. So I'm going to add a cleanser. Now in this case, I'm gonna add Mithrala. I do have Mithrala, you may not, that's okay. You can even use somebody like Reliquary Tender, who is a void rare that you can get relatively early in the game. She's going to have a cleanse with, I believe, a continuous heal, and that's going to make you survivable a little bit longer because you're going to remove those drop defense debuffs that, in this case, Madam Saris is bringing. The cleanse could also remove uh, the freeze that Ninja may apply. So depending on which skill Ninja is using first, he may use an AoE freeze, and your cleanser should be able to remove that. What you have to do here is make sure that you have very, very high resist on your cleanser. Now, Mithrala has a ton of resist on her. She's probably, I don't even know, maybe 600 resist, something like that. So I'm not worried about her being able to resist any of the debuff effects from the enemy team. I think that will happen. And that's why I've got her in this role. 
Now, after your cleanser and your defensive aura here, you may want to consider at least one reviver. Uh, if you have an AOE reviver that's pretty tanky, that's a good option. If you don't have an AOE reviver, you can go with two single target revivers or less than AOE revivers. So for instance, you could potentially bring in somebody like Sill of the Drakes and Rector Drath. And between all of the heals that they give your team and all of the mitigations that they give your team and all the other skills, they also can revive each other, making your team very hard to completely take off the board. But in this case, I'm going to go with an AOE reviver who also has another skill that is important, which is removing buffs. Now, their team is, has a Valkyrie. Valkyrie could get a counterattack and a shield up. So I want some way to remove those buffs. I could potentially remove them with Mithrala's Hex um, and her passive, which gives petrification. But I'm actually just going to use a straight buff removal champion. And that is Mighty Uko here, who also has an AoE revive. Now, the final spot here could be really flexible. I could bring in a healer. I could bring in a second reviver. I could bring in a second damage dealer. I have the cleanses that I need. Um, but I think I'm going to go with another tanky champion just to emphasize, you know, the, the go second mentality here. So I am going to go ahead and bring in Sill of the Drakes. And what that is going to mean is not only does she have some AoE stuns, she has some passive heals, but in case Mighty Uko goes down, I'm going to have Scylla the Drakes here as a second option. Most of my damage is going to come from Ragash, but even if I had no damage dealer at all, let's say I had UDK in that spot, once I kill their Arbiter, they have no revivers and they also have no healers. So if it takes 10 rounds, I know I'm going to win because I have heals, revives, cleanses you know i have everything i need to make sure that i can basically stay alive forever against this team so now let's go ahead and fight them and see what happens okay so they won the speed race and they are going madam saris is going to give me drop defense in some places now we're going to get the nuke they didn't get the freeze out there but you'll notice they didn't kill anybody either i have enough defense and enough hp on my entire team to withstand their first complete turn. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that Mithrala to cleanse everybody. She's also gonna give everybody increase, uh, she's gonna give everybody a shield on this one. So she's gonna cleanse everybody and give everybody a shield. She also gives strengthen, which makes me even more survivable. Now the enemy does have counter attack here, but that's why I brought Mighty Uko. Mighty Uko on the A2 is going to remove buffs if I have enough accuracy. So it's going to strip those counterattacks off, also potentially strip those shields off and those increased attacks off, and then place a block debuffs on these champion champions. So there we go. We got all of the buffs off of pretty much everybody except Ninja. Now the counterattacks do go through on this. That's something to be aware of that even when you remove the counterattack, the counterattack still procs. And now they're almost ready to go again, but they're in a much weakened state. And now I've got my Scylla the Drakes who gave everybody a nice little heal. I'm gonna throw out my AOE stun. I stunned their entire team, which is very nice. Um, and then now I'm getting into my damage dealer. So what I wanna do is I wanna prioritize the Nuker and the Reviver. Those are the two most important enemies to kill. Since I can't target Ninja because he's under a veil, I'm just gonna go after the Arbiter here. Get a decent amount of damage. She's pretty tanky there. Now I'm going to throw out my Hex, which also is an AoE there. Everybody's going to take a little bit more damage. Mighty Uko has a decreased attack on his A1, which is an AoE, so I'm going to get that out there. Now I'm really confident that I'm not going to die because Ninja has that decreased attack, and I'm going to keep hammering at this Arbiter until I kill her. I'm going to use my AoE on Ragash, and there we go. And now I can just hit auto and let the AI take it home. So a good go second team here. Obviously, this is a very strong team with very difficult champions to obtain and build out. Um, but I was going up against a gold, gold five go first team again with very good champions. Ninja, Valkyrie, Arbiter, Madam Saris are all top notch champions. So you have to obviously build your go second team for the area of arena that you're in. 
and you will cap out at some point until you can get stronger champions or you can get better gear and build them even stronger than you have them originally. But the concept remains the same. Get a good defensive aura, preferably increase defense or increase HP, maybe resistance if if that's what you think you need on that particular team. Bring in a reviver, bring in a healer, bring in a cleanser. You only need one damage dealer. In fact, you don't even need a damage dealer. I could have done this with UDK in that spot where Ragash is, and I would have had a, a tank, a reviver, a cleanser, and a healer, and I still would have won this fight very easily because I built the team in the proper way to go second and withstand the entire other team's best shot, basically. Not only withstand it, but get back up to full health and remove their ability to injure me further. And that's what a go team second needs to do. So just very quickly, before we completely move on, I want to go back to the early game account to show you some go second teams. These are not teams that I'm building, but these are the teams that I am going up against in Classic Arena. So you can see here that there are several go second teams. If you took Deliana instead of Deacon Armstrong, it, that's a very good option. That's a very good start for get, getting a go second team. Now, in this particular case, again, you'll have that Deliana in the lead. She's giving increases ally HP in all battles by 33%. So she makes her whole team a lot tankier. They still have one nuker on this team. It's a ninja. It's not a fully built ninja. But actually, Helicath here hits pretty hard as well. So even though he is a defensive base champion that brings a block damage buff and a shield, his AoE on his shield hits very hard. He also has a weaken on his A1. He also has a counter attack. So when his, his I believe when his block damage buff is up, he will counter attack when anybody is hit. So the damage here is just basically coming from Deliana and Helicap, and it's more than enough. Doom Priest is keeping them alive with some extra heals, and Ninja is there almost as a distraction. This Ninja isn't even necessary for this team to go. I would not take this team on. I think it's a bad, bad chance for me to just get wiped out here. There's a chance I could win if I could kill everybody except Helicath. Potentially, my Jamarsa could keep my team long enough to defeat the Helicath. But that Helicath might be strong enough to 1v4 my entire team. We also have another go second team here that is a little bit of a trap. You'll notice that this team has Kale in the lead. Now that is a defensive aura of ally HP in all battles by 15%. But we know that Deliana has a stronger aura. Now, the reason I think that Kale is in the lead is, like I said, this is a trap. This player wants to win points on defense. So the team is appearing weaker than it actually is. Deliana is six stars. Artac is six stars. They are both very, very tanky champions. The Ronda here isn't really necessary for damage, but she does bring a block passives uh, and block active skills debuff. So she could be here just to use that ability. And then obviously Kale brings plenty of damage if he needs it. But I think just the Artek and the Deliana are probably enough to take my team down. I do not have enough damage to, to burn through those two tanks. And so this is a team I would definitely want to avoid. Obviously the player power is also more than double my player power. So that's a good indication that I don't want to take this team on. So as you can see, whether you're early game or late game, whether you're in silver or even bronze or gold, you can build a go second team to be very effective. Again, the most important thing is that when you are on offense, you choose opponents that you're likely to beat depending on the composition of your team. So if you have a go first team and you can win that speed race and they are relatively squishy, you're in good shape. Or if you have a go second team, then it doesn't matter if you win the speed race, and as long as the enemy team is pretty squishy, you're good. It's generally advisable to avoid go second teams unless you know that you have enough power to chew through them and not get ground down by their defensiveness and their healing and their reviving. Another thing to consider is going in and manualing fights so that you can make sure that you prioritize the targets properly. And when you do that, you can basically beat any team that you have, you know, close to the same power as as long as you've judged the opponent properly. Okay, that is it. That is how to build a go first team. That's how to build a go second team. You can do that right from 
bronze all the way up to gold five and the concept remains the same and it never really changes so as you get more powerful gear that those same compositions will grow with you remember that as your fastest champion gets faster you don't want to disconnect your speed tune like i've done with my team so make sure that you are improving each champion in your team composition at the same time so that the team remains effective that is true for a go first team or a go second team it doesn't really matter if you have a weak link that's the the champion that weak champion that the enemy is going to take advantage of that's going to break up the effectiveness of your team and you're going to lose all right that is it for the arena basics on how to build a go first team or a go second team if you have any questions on either of those compositions or the theories behind them or if you're curious about a different type of composition that maybe I didn't mention today, please put those questions in the comments below. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you get notifications when I upload new videos. And I will hopefully see you in another video very soon.